So this is the, the uh, and I, I have to um, really uh, pay tribute to uh, the people I work with and my, my team, uh, Neve Dooley in particular and Emmett Power, who have been hugely involved in, in this study and um, Emmett was a, a key person, I think, helping to get things off the ground in North Dublin, Kevin and Monaghan. And Neve um, is, is a wizard with slides and she made these nice slides for me. So this is um, about basically about the uh, the Kevin Monaghan and North Dublin data, where, which I've been involved in as kind of academic partner. I must say I can't take credit for any of the work, that, the work that people have done on the ground, like David and Breege and Maureen and Andy and Colette and Steve have been, have been just incredible. You know, I'm just, I'm just blown away by the amount of work that they do. Um, and we just, we just kind of look at the data. So um, we'll go through mental health issues and then talk a bit about cannab cannabis use. Um, so the, uh, I think you've probably gone through a lot of this, haven't you, this morning? So maybe I could, could skip this. It's basically uh, just saying the, the, the three areas that we've been involved in. Um, and then I think you've probably covered this as well. Uh, Maureen, is, uh, would you have covered a lot of this? Uh, no, okay. Um, so it, it, there was uh, excellent school response rates in uh, in, in, the, in the three areas, uh, particularly uh, I must say in, in Cavan Monaghan, uh, they had a hundred percent of the schools responding. You had a few uh, ho holding out, I think, for you, in, uh, as you mentioned, David, in, in North Dublin. But I think you're you're working on them. <laughs> um, and. Uh, the participant response rate was just amazing. Uh, again, seventy-six to eighty-eight percent, incredible. Yeah, um, and uh, the um, the the demographics. Then we had um, male, uh, male and female, and then we had this the interesting group uh, of young people who um, I suppose we we uh, th they said they were not. Uh, didn't didn't uh, kind of assign themselves to either gender, um, so we, we'll come back to those. They were were an interesting group, and I think it's something we hadn't um, imagined would be so. Uh, they would they they will require some special attention, I think. Um, so the uh, the age was mainly 15, 16, as you can see here. Uh, I don't know if I, do I have a pointer in this thing? Yeah, I do. Oh, I do. Great. Um, yeah. So it's transition year students. Um, and the data collection was, I think, you know, around just just at the kind of during the COVID period as they were coming back to school. So it was it was difficult, but I think you were meant to collect, we were meant to collect the data in 2020, but of course the COVID pandemic hit. So as soon as there was a, an opportunity, the data collection went ahead. Um, now, what in terms of mental health, the measures um, that we have a measure uh, in, in in this kind of questionnaire, which I think you didn't have in in uh, Galway, which was the SDQ, the Strengths and Difficulties Questionnaire, yeah, which is one that I'm, I'm particularly fond of, and it gives it's a very well known um, uh, uh, questionnaire used internationally, very very simple to use, and can give a measure of mental health in young people, which will correlate kind of two disorders. Uh, and then there was this question, which I think you do have in Galway, which is the how how is your mental Mental health. How do you rate your mental health? That's a self-reported question from the young people. Uh, we also another thing we added in in the, in this uh, data collection, which we didn't didn't have in the West, was uh, something I'm particularly interested in myself. is psychotic-like experiences. These are young people who say they hear voices or have um, kind of uh, strange beliefs that that other pe uh, or, or feel they're being maybe being followed or watched. Um, and then there, there we also have data on suicidal thoughts and attempts. So um, now. The, this is the question about how, how would you rate your mental health. So you can see here that um, there's uh, quite a break, a difference in how the, the genders, and I'll call it three genders if you like, the males, females, and then the young people who don't assign themselves to either group would rate their mental health. And we can see that instantly there, there are, I suppose the, ma the males are the lowest in each of the three regions. The females are next, so about 30, so about, um, you know, 18, 17, 18 percent of young of young boys uh, that, that would rate their mental health as as bad or very bad. Uh, with the girls, it's about, about 38 percent. So it's more than twice as many girls are rating their mental health as as bad uh, or very bad. And then this group of young people now, admittedly, very, you know, less than five percent. But they, they're, they're meant, there are real concerns about mental health of the group of young people who don't assign themselves to either gender. Okay. Um, so. Uh, this is oh yes, yeah, so see there's slight differences in the areas, not not hugely. Um, uh, Monaghan slightly less in terms of young people rating their mental health as bad or very bad, but it, not not major differences. Um, how would you? Uh, and this is in in terms. Oh sorry, this was uh, physical health. Yeah, this isn't looking at. It's just out of interest. Oh, sorry, out of interest. See how people. 
uh, it's not that the young people are just saying we're bad, every, everything's bad for us, but they're actually, you know, very, not many of them are rating their physical health as poor, but you can see big, big differences here in terms of their mental health. So young people are, this is, this is the area of, of, of real concern for, for them. Um, now in terms of STQ scores, um, the, uh, the, the, the scores are, uh, so this is the young people, see up here that if you score more than 20 on this scale, I think it's out of 25, there's, there's five different parts of the scale measuring different uh, areas such as depression, anxiety, conduct problems, peer problems. And if you, if you rate more than 20, that would be a point at which I suppose uh, in terms of psychiatry we would feel this this young person may have a probable disorder. So they might meet criteria for a disorder if, if we were to see them in a clinic or they may warrant referral to a clinic. Um, so uh, previously uh, in uh, like the Growing Up in Ireland study, we would have had rates of about maybe 6% um, scoring above this, above this cutoff. But what we're seeing here, the, the rates did catch us by surprise. Um, we're having 18%, 33% of the girls and about 60% of the young people in, uh, in the kind of uh, non-binary uh, group, trans non-binary group. So these are already higher than we would have ever expected. Now, admittedly, in the growing up in Ireland, it was parent rated. Um, this is the young people rating themselves, but still, these are, these are um, higher than we would have expected. Um, so, it, in terms of overall rates, not, uh, with, with all the genders, about 26% of young people would seem to hit criteria for a possible disorder. And again, these, these are very high rates. Um, okay, so um, the, um, in terms of uh, ca comparisons internationally now, admittedly this data was, was maybe older. This would be Australia, uh, UK, Germany, Spain, Norway. Uh, these are like SDQ scores now, they would have been pre-pandemic, I suppose. So our scores are higher um, than you would have seen from other international uh, studies. Okay, um, so uh, th just to summarise, 29% of young people in the sample said their mental health was bad, compared to 9% who reported their physical health was bad. Um, and uh, there's small variation across the counties, but a large variation across genders. Now this is in terms of psychotic-like experiences, which are again young people who, you know, questions like do you ever hear voices or sounds that no one else can hear? Have you ever seen things no one else could see? Do you believe your thoughts can be read by others? These kind of slightly unusual perceptual uh, thoughts and beliefs. Um, so we're, we're finding again rates of um, uh, 20, 26% in, in girls, 37, 31% in, sorry, the other one, boys and then, so the rates are, are higher. Overall there's about... Um, 29% of young people reporting these kind of symptoms. Now, I suppose what, what the research that we've done in our group uh, in relation to these symptoms seem to indicate that they don't mean someone is going to be going to have a psychotic disorder later. Your risk is higher, but it generally tends to mean young people who are under stress, under pressure, um, and uh, it, it may be at risk for other kinds of disorders. Or, or it's an indicator of, of just poor, poor mental health generally. So these rates, again, are higher than we would have expected uh, for this age group, who would, would have previously been thinking about 17%. Um, okay, so uh, this was just, just for the hearing voices question. I think I'll skip over that. All right, this is suicidal thoughts and attempts. So um, have you ever had suicidal thoughts? Again, 42% uh, of, of the sample uh, said yes. This varied a little bit between the groups. Uh, slightly higher in North Dublin, uh, but again, not not huge variation. Um, and then, have you ever attempted suicide? This was a concerning one. Uh, Eleven percent of the sample said they had attempted uh, suicide. Um, and again, slight variation between the samples. We're probably seeing a more of an urban urbanicity effect here. Uh, young people in urban environments. Again, this would have implication for services. Um, you know, I think we need to be aware that that uh, this is we can't put our heads in the sands about this. Um, we are already we're seeing this in the emergency departments. Um, there's huge increases of presentations to Temple Street Emergency Department. Uh, for for instance, they've been monitoring this over the years. So, this is a way young people express distress. Um, and um, okay, how, uh, again, it varies by gender. Again, this, they're seeing the same pattern all the time, you know, with all these mental health measures. Um, so, it, in in summary, then we're we're finding that um, again, like females, again, uh, seem to have more more issues with mental health at the moment than than bo the boys, um, and the non-binary trans or prefer not to say group have even higher higher rates. 
Okay, um, some risk factors, again, we, we've talked about this, female sex, trans, uh, North Dublin, slightly. You can see these are, you know, so th this is about like a two-fold increased risk for bad subject to mental health, nearly three-fold for girls versus boys, nine-fold increase for trans versus male. Uh, North Dublin is a slight, like just 5%, just a tiny bit, bit increase, but still. Um, and then financial, relative financial poverty, this was, was picked up by... Um, a question in the questionnaire, like, do you feel your family is relatively less well off than others? And this again seems to be linked to uh, in, uh, poor mental health. Um, now, the COVID, David mentioned COVID. Uh, so we're, we're, you're probably all thinking, well, this was done during COVID. This is all due to COVID. Now, we don't know um, because we don't have a prior survey. So it'll be very interesting to see the results coming out of the next survey um, to see is this, effect, is this, is this going down. Hopefully, the rates will start going down again. Um, but, you know, as David mentioned, they, the young people are reporting um, yeah, COVID did affect their lives, um, particularly in the area of school. So if you see the red here is that young people who report uh, that they're a worse or a lot worse uh, for, uh, during, during COVID. How did it affect these areas of your life? And you can see that school, school and mental health were the two areas where they're feeling things were a lot worse. Um, and uh, I suppose we'll, you know, uh, it, uh, we, we will have yet to see how long-lasting these effects may, may be for, for young people, hopefully not. Just, just uh, some very um, recent data that's coming out, I suppose we're, we've been very interested about this, why are young girls seem to be um, more affected or having more mental health effects than, than boys at the moment, why, why are there higher levels of mental health problems among girls? And uh, some young researchers with, with us are thinking, well, could it be something to do with social media? Uh, the, way, the way young girls use social media as opposed to boys. And what's interesting here, these, these are um, the, 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 blue, uh, the blue are the males and the, the, the females um, are the red. And this is the, the SDQ scores on this, on this axis here. And then this is watching social, this is just number of hours you spend on social media. So it's one hour, two hours, four plus hours. <laughs> Uh, one, two, four plus. This is passively watching things and this is playing video games. So this is just the number of hours, okay? Passively watching or video games. And you can see what's interesting here is that, um, you know, as you might have expected, I suppose, the longer you spend on social media, the more, the worse the STQ scores seem to be. Now, we can't say this is causal. We're just saying one is associated with the other because we don't have longitudinal information. This is cross-sectional. So, um, but there's definitely, uh, it seems to be a link with, with poor mental health. And it, 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 again, it's worse for the girls than for the boys. So, so social media may be having some kind of effect uh, on this additive kind of effect on, on girls. Um, and uh, the, uh, we found about a two, two to three-fold increased risk for those who are spending more than four hours on social media. Um, and, uh, in girls, about a, no, it was a two and a half-fold increased risk in girls uh, in terms of odds ratios of being in the top STQ score. And then the, the boys was about 1.5. 1, 1. So, um, so the effects were, they're both in both sexes, seem to be a bit more accentuated in the girls. Other areas, and uh, the, sorry, this slide didn't come out very well. Um, yeah, we, we looked at two other areas, which is uh, body image. I'll, I'll just read it out, actually. Um, that's probably the best thing. Um, body image and uh, sexually explicit uh, messaging. Um, so the, in terms of um, poor body image, uh, is, is, effect, is associated with uh, high SDQ scores um, for both genders. So about a threefold increased risk of getting a, a high SDQ score if you have poor body image, you feel you're... you're Worse than um, that, you feel you don't you don't look good or don't feel good about yourself. Um, but what's interesting is that even though the, there's the both the, both the boys both the boys and the girls have this effect. So the worse your your body image, the wor the higher your mental health scores. But a lot more girls have a poor body image than boys. So um, uh, it's quite worryingly, about sixty one percent of girls said they had a poor body image, compared to thirty six percent of the boys. So you can see. These have the same effect, but it's magnified in the girls because more of the girls have this particular risk factor. Um, and it's the same with the sexually explicit messaging uh, with here. So they, again, in both genders, there was a link between the, getting these sexually explicit messages or being asked to send these messages um, in terms of increasing uh, uh, poor mental health. But again, much more girls are uh, 
you know, having this experience. So one in five girls had said that they had had a request to send send one of these kind of messages. So this is, you know, very prevalent, and we need to uh, we need to be aware of these issues. And this is the power of Planet Youth is we can get this real time data, and um, you know, we can look now that the data is coming out again. What's what's happening? Um, sorry, the slides wasn't very great quality. Now, do I have time to do uh, what, what, how many hours do minutes do I have left? Uh, I can, uh, sorry, minutes, minutes, yeah. So, um, yeah, so this is cannabis use, the particular interest of mine. And, and Chris O'Dowd, who's a public health trainee, um, she, she looked at this data in terms of cannabis use. We found about 7% uh, of young people were using cannabis in the last uh, 30 days. Um, and then, uh, the, the, which actually isn't, it's about the SPAD average. So, you know, we, we're not, we're not, uh, you know, we're not way above the European average there. Um, in terms of, of the characteristics, um, well, it, it, what's interesting here is that we didn't find a gender difference. So as, as many girls now are using as boys, which is, uh, and that's kind of new, I think, because it used to be the young boys that were using more than, than young women. Um, so, uh, and then you can see this relationship with uh, other substances as well. In terms of risk and protective factors, uh, Teresa took a whole lot of, um, she, she picked out some particular risk factors from the uh, Planet Youth questionnaire and uh, put them into an analysis and, and adjusted for each other and for, for um, uh, various other factors. And she's, she's, she uh, looked at the outcome in terms of odds of using cannabis in the past month. So that was, that was our outcome measure. And these are the ones that come up as significant. I'll, I'll just go through them as we go along. Peer factors. So this is particular. This was the highest risk factor for odds of using cannabis among adolescents was whether their peers used. So you can see the power of the the social networks and the young people that they're hanging out with. So if you had peers that use cannabis, you were nine, nearly ten times at risk. And feeling peer pressure to use cannabis as well. Um, the in terms of uh, other substances, we can see we can't look at cannabis use alone. These young people tend to use other substances such as alcohol, smoking, and e-cigarettes. <coughs> uh, parental factors. David talks a lot about parental factors. These are really important. Uh, again, the the second highest risk factor was feeling that your if you felt your parents were sort of in favour of cannabis or not against cannabis, you were more likely. You were nearly four times more likely to use cannabis yourself as a as a young person. And if you were less supervised by your parents, uh, you were more likely to use. So you can see the parental, you could twist that around to be risk factors or protective factors in terms of parental attitudes uh, as well. So we, uh, we found no, no. So the, they, in summary then, youth perception of cannabis is harmful. Higher parental supervision levels and parents against cannabis were protective. Uh, and then um, risk factors were other substance use, uh, peer cannabis use and peer pressure to use. Uh, okay, I think, um, yeah, I think we're nearly there. Um, so uh, this was just in terms of, I think, you know, it'll be really great over the next while to, to look at trends uh, from east-west, if you like, from, uh, you know, the, the, the Galway Mayor Ross Common data versus the, the, the Cavan Monaghan North Dublin data. Um, we're finding, I suppose, some of, our uh, some of our mental health measures seem to be a bit higher uh, in the east and the west. Um, which uh, you know, again, we have to keep, to keep an eye on and, that, and I was talking to Debs there and, and soon we're going to have, um, I think, Tipperary and, and Wicklow joining the Planet Youth, uh, or maybe I shouldn't say that, is that half off the press, <laughs> sorry. Uh, anyway, there, there's, there's, we, we may have a Midlands uh, relation soon. Uh, okay, so um, I think I'll, I'll uh, stop there and just to say um, thank you very much for listening and I'm sorry it's a bit of a depressing thing to end on but um, I think it would have been nice to have David coming on now with a good news story which you can you can switch back to to to, to uh, his hopeful messages uh, but you know we have some work to do the looking at the trends will be really interesting now the next the data that's just come out to see what way these trends are going hopefully they will be going down so thank you very much for uh,